Well, let's talk more about that, Rudy Giuliani. Being criminally charged in Georgia isn't the only trouble that is facing Giuliani, Trump's former attorney. CNN has now learned that even before this indictment, Giuliani is staring down hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal bills and more related to his work for Donald Trump after the 2020 election. Still, Giuliani isn't shying away from attacking the DA in Georgia, who he'll soon see in court. She's a, a politician uh, and not a lawyer, not an honest, honorable lawyer. This is a ridiculous application of the racketeering statute. Uh, there's probably no one that knows it better than I do. Uh, this is not meant for election disputes. I mean, uh, this is ridiculous what she's doing. Also, I don't know if she realizes it because she seems like a pretty incompetent, sloppy prosecutor. Let's get over to CNN's Caitlin Polenz. Caitlin, tell us more about this reporting that you've uncovered about what the current state of Rudy Giuliani's financial situation is. Yeah, Kate, Rudy Giuliani doesn't even have the money to respond to some of the demands that are being made upon him as these lawsuits related to the 2020 election move forward. So we saw some court filings this week. There's even a hearing happening right now in New York in the defamation case that Smartmatic, the voting machine company, had filed against Giuliani for making false statements about them and the 2020 election. And in that case, uh, he has all of his electronic records held by an archiving company, a data holder uh, called TrustPoint. And that company needs to have him pay for searches so that he can turn over his records in these lawsuits, not just the Smartmatic lawsuit, but in others. And in this court filing on Monday, he doesn't have $15,000 or somewhere between $15,000 and $23,000 to pay them to run the search he needed to run. He also doesn't have the money to keep his electronic records hosted by this company. They charge about $20,000 a month, every month, to keep his records active and alive so that he can can use them in these lawsuits to defend himself. On top of that, he has other bills. He just had, had a court order recently where he has to pay cell phone bills that went unpaid in 2020 related to his company. That is not a small amount either. And then there is also on top of that bills that he has to pay for sanctions uh, for other people's legal fees where he hasn't responded appropriately in these 2020 election lawsuits. So, Kate, it is a lot of money that he has to pay now. And that's just just the start if he were to lose these lawsuits and also those criminal cases that cost money to defend as well. Yeah. I mean, if $57,000 in phone bills that have gone unpaid, I mean, that, you're right. That is no small amount. That, that, and that's just one little element of what he's up against. Great to see you, Caitlin. Great reporting. Thank you. <clears throat> Sarah? Joining us now, Nick Ackerman, former assistant special Watergate prosecutor and former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. I'm going to start with this and then we will also get to Giuliani. Why is Mark Meadows trying to move the case from state court to federal court? Well, I think the reason for doing that is to try and get it out of completely a Fulton County jury so that they have a broader jury to pick from that would include a lot more conservative Republicans from rural areas. I think that's the primary reason to do it. Uh, the reason Mark Meadows, I think, is a very strategic decision among the defendants. Uh, of all of the defendants, um, he probably would, on the surface, seem to have the best chance to do this uh, because he was basically a gopher for Donald Trump. So the question is going to be, when he goes before and, and files this in federal court, whether he was acting within the scope of his duties as Donald Trump's um, main um, person, um, as his as his you know secretary of mm. whatever it is, I mean he was the guy who was supposed to be running that. And I think what the prosecutors will do will come back with very hard evidence showing that Mark Meadows actually committed crimes, um, and that will do it because the standard here is whether or not he was acting in the scope of his duties as as chief of staff for Donald Trump. And certainly, one of those duties is not committing crimes. A committing so Nick, a crime is not within the, his duties. In fact, this is the same thing that Judge Hellerstein denied Donald Trump 
in the New York case. Nick, I want to ask you about that because there are a host of Republicans making arguments that the state court should not be able to try a former president. Um, but Trump is a private citizen, as is Mark Meadows. So is this a political argument that we're seeing play out or is this an actual legal argument that holds water? Oh, no, it's an actual legal argument. There is a statute uh, that permits uh, government officials uh, to remove uh, cases to the federal court. Uh, but there's a standard to be met. And the standard is whether or not he, the, the actions that are being complained of were in the course of his normal duties in that official capacity. Mm -hmm. And that's where Mark Meadows is going to fall short. It's where Donald Trump fell short before Judge Hellerstein in New York, who found that paying money to a uh, hush money uh, to a porn star and covering it up by falsifying business records was not within the scope of the duties of the president of the United States. I think the same decision, the same decision is going to be precedent here for the federal court to do the exact same thing and deny it. But basically, Mark Meadows is the stalking horse for the other defendants in the case. To see if he gets it done, then they might follow suit. Nick Ackerman, thank you so much for the, all of that. Um, and very interesting to know what happened in the state case in New York. You're saying that same kind of precedent may be set to keep the state case in Georgia from going to the federal courts. Appreciate you.